She came to me with a pair of field glasses and told me to look through it from the large end. The past became so clear and yet so far away. She taught me to navigate the course of destiny, inspired me to express the legacy of my father's hope using mathematical representations. Thank you, Emily, for making a difference in the autumn of my life. The purpose of this presentation is to present and introduce the concepts of viewing a higher dimensional object in a lower dimensional world. Using the model based on a coordinate axis, as in a coordinate geometry, we will be able to visualise a simplified version of a four dimensional cube. Imagine you live in a one dimensional world between the points A and B. A circle is heading towards the line. Of course, you have no awareness of the circle until it first touches the line and you see it as a point. As the circle travels across the line, the shadow on the line grows in size and then the shadow shrinks to a point and then disappears. Under that scenario, the circle appeared as an expanding and shrinking line. Supposing the circle flips around 90 degrees and heads towards the line, this time the circle appears as a line segment only momentarily. The appearance of a circle in a one-dimensional world can be described as polymorphism. Polymorphism is a concept that states that an object can appear in different forms to the viewer. To understand the extension of the four-dimensional world, we'll start by demonstrating the process of collapsing a 3D cube to a lower dimension. Here we have a three-dimensional cube with eight vertices and 12 edges. Here are the eight vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Here are the 12 edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Out from each vertex there are three mutually perpendicular lines, one, two, and three. By compressing in the direction of the red arrow, one dimension is eliminated and the 3D cube collapses to a 2D cube, which is a square. By compressing the direction of the blue arrow, one dimension is eliminated and the 2D cube collapses to a one-dimensional cube, which is a line. Let us start with a one-dimensional world with two points, A and B. In the one-dimensional world, the points can be represented as 0 and 1. To extend into the 2D world, we add an extra coordinate to each of the points so that A and B are 0, 0 and 0, 1. Now place a one-dimensional cube or a line in the two-dimensional space with the coordinates 1, 0 and 1, 1 for C and D respectively. So now we have a two-dimensional cube. Now join A to C and B to D. There's a simple rule for the linking of the points by matching the last coordinate. Now that we have a two-dimensional cube, we extend to a three-dimensional cube. First add an extra coordinate to the points A, B, C and D with the value of 0 in the new coordinate. Form a 2 D cube E, F, G, H with a value of 1 in the new coordinate. Join each point to its sister point so that 0 x, y is joined to 1 x, y. When this process is completed, we have a three-dimensional cube. To form a four-dimensional cube, we add an extra coordinate to each of the points A through to H. In the three-dimensional cube with a value of 0, create a new three-dimensional cube I, J, K, L, M, N, O, and P, with a value of 1 in the new coordinate. Join the point 0, X, Y, Z to 1, X, Y, Z. So now we have a four-dimensional cube represented on a two-dimensional surface. This is another representation of a four-dimensional cube. We'll attempt to enumerate the number of vertices, edges, squares, and cubes in the four-dimensional cube. To find the number of vertices, it should be clear from the construction process that each dimension contains twice as many vertices as the next lower. The pattern for the number of vertices is 2, 4, 8, 16 and so on. A one-dimensional cube has two vertices, a two-dimensional cube has four, a three-dimensional cube has eight and a 4D cube has 16. Now each vertex has four edges attached to it. As each edge contains two vertices, there are 16 by four edges. We actually divide this number by two due to the redundancy of the counting methods, which gives us a final answer of 32 edges. To determine the number of squares in a four-dimensional cube, 
we observe each edge is the intersection of three squares. For example, take the edge AB. It is contained within three squares, one, two, and three. The number of squares is one, two, and three. Since a square contains four edges, we multiply the number of edges 32 by three squares and divide the number by four, giving us a final answer of 24. Each cube is the intersection of two squares. And since a cube contains six squares, the number of three dimensional cubes within the 4D cube is two multiplied by the number of squares divided by six. This gives us a final number of eight. This presentation was an introduction to the concept of four dimensional cubes in a 2D space. For more information, you can find the Wikipedia page, which will give you more of a constructive insight into the topic.